For this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God that you have decided to join us this week for our midweek re-up. Listen, my name is Randy Jones. I'm the pastor here at Griffin Chapel United Methodist Church in Starksville, Mississippi. Listen, do me a favor. Do me a favor. I need you to like, comment, and share, okay? Like, comment, and share. Hit that share button. Hit that share button. Um, invite somebody to join us um, for our midweek re-up. Um, invite somebody to join us. Um, tag someone. Hit that share button. Bring somebody along with us. This is our 21st century version of evangelism. Uh, no longer are we, because of COVID, we're knocking on doors, but we are tagging people. We are sharing this. So if you're on YouTube, hit that share button. Hit that um, copy link and send it to about five people. Um, then also, if you're on Facebook, um, hit that share button and send it. Um, and send it on your timeline and make sure someone is joining with us. We're grateful to God that each week that you have decided to join and join with us. Listen, do me a favor, write one word how you're feeling on today. Y'all already know it. Write one word how you're feeling. I'm blessed. I'm blessed with everything that's going on. I am blessed. I am blessed. Uh, if I can extend it, it'd be blessed and highly favored, but uh, I'm just going to say I'm blessed, okay? Um, so write one word how you're feeling. Write one word how you're feeling. Listen, before before we go forward, we always want to make sure that we are starting out with prayer. We're starting out with prayer. So if you're needing prayer, write in the comments, I need prayer. I need prayer. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe it's your loved ones. And the truth be told, maybe it's just you. A songwriter says, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Another song that says, someone pray for me. Someone had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. So I want you to do this right now. If you write in the comments, say, I need prayer or my family need prayer or tag someone and say, this person needs prayer as well. All right. Um, all right. Let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way. God, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister that is watching right now. Maybe it's somebody that's close to them that's needing prayer. Maybe them themselves need prayer. But right now, God, we're asking that you come and see about this. So God, be with them, God. God, I pray for everyone that's watching right now. I pray for those that are watching live and those that will watch this on a replay, God. Wrap your hand of protection around them. Be with them, God. Strengthen us, God, as we continue to do what you have called for us to do. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, God. Go to every hospital, God. Go to every nursing home, God. God, I pray for those that have recently lost loved ones, God. Wrap your hands around them. Let them realize the earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Now, sometimes we don't understand it, but we'll understand it better by and by. So, God, be with us, God. Strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, last week, last week we had some complications. Um, some of the videos, some of the videos that were attached to it had some copyright issues. So it kind of blocked other people from watching it and stuff. So we kind of uh, took that portion out for right now until we can get a clear, clear understanding. So we're going to go directly. We're going to go directly into the word of God. I normally take a moment and add a song in here, but we had some copyright issues, so it kind of blocked us. I had to delete the video and then re-upload it. So in order to get away from that, we're going to go directly to God's word. We're going to go directly to God's word, and uh, we're going to study what God has called us to do, okay? All right. All right. For the last for the last uh, few weeks, we have been uh, circling the, the topic of back to the basics, and we're um, going to be talking a little bit a little bit um, about that as well on today. Okay, um, Philippians three, verse twelve through fourteen. Philippians three, verse twelve through fourteen. And it reads, now that I have obtained this or have already reached the goal, 
but I press on to make it to my make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straightening forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. All right. We're going to focus in on the 14th verse. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. For well, this is where God, for the people of God, praise be to God. I'm going to talk just for a brief moment, just for a brief moment. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let us pray. God, I decrease so that you may increase. Lord, speak through me. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest now, rule and abide. And all of God's people said, amen. Don't, don't give up. This, this, past, this past week, I find it very remarkable that in almost all of the games that were played with the NFL, almost all of the games were won with a field goal. Field goal is normally the last resort if you're not able to make it happen through um, a touchdown that you would have this field goal that would be kicked. My favorite team, Green Bay Packers, lost in a nail-biter 10-13 to 13, where majority of the plays were done through field goal, and it was done through defense. We lost to a team that we had lost multiple times in uh, this postseason, and it really, really frustrated me. But it showed me that the team wasn't willing to give up. And they pushed forward because they really wanted to win. He even had this nail-biter, which is considered one of the greatest games of all, the greatest teams of all. You have the Kansas City Chiefs and Buffalo Bills, which was a nail-biter. And in the last few minutes of the game, almost 20-something points was played. And in the last few minutes, they went all the way down the field and came all the way back up the field and went all the way down the field, came all the way back up the field. It showed them that, that even in the midst of it all, that if you're not willing to give up, you still have an opportunity to win. It even got so serious that, even, you may not even watch sports, but it got so serious that in the last 13 seconds, the last 13 seconds, they said it wasn't even possible for Kansas City to march up the field to get to a field goal to send it to overtime. And in 13 seconds, they had three plays that they made happen. Which tells me that even with less time, you still have the ability to push forward. Even in the midst of everything that's going on, you still can get to the point where you have an opportunity. Most of us, most of us, when we see that we don't have enough time, we see that we don't have enough resources, we see we don't have enough structure, we see all of the stuff around us that we feel as if it's better to give up than to keep on pushing. Truth be told, is that with all that you've been through, with all that you're going through, with all of the circumstances that have been around you, it would not be surprising if you did give up. Songwriter says it best. <laughs> One of the old hip hop songs that says, at first you don't succeed, pick yourself up and try again. At first you don't succeed, pick yourself up and try again. Because all of us have had times where we've stumbled and we wanted to give up and throw in a towel. The amazing thing about Joseph's story in Genesis is that we have this remarkable situation where every time he had a stumbling block ahead of him, he realized that God was with him. That he got thrown into slavery. But even though he was a slave made in Potiphar's house, the Bible says that God was with him. 
he was thrown into prison. And even though he was in prison, he was made like the chief prisoner. And it said that God was with him. Even though the butler and the baker forgot about him when he got out and one was restored and one was killed, he told them their dream. The Bible let us know that God was with him when he got out. He became the second in command all throughout the nation. And that even though he was going through, he made it possible so his family could be taken care of because of the decisions he made. The truth be told is that even in the midst of it all, all the decisions that have been made, everything that you have done, everything that you have sacrificed, God has been right there with you. So don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. God will make things better sooner or later. This text, this text, it begins with Paul by saying that he doesn't think of himself more highly than he also thinks. Instead of thinking of himself with sober judgment. He brings into play is that already but not yet of Christianity and Christ has come and made salvation possible. But it wouldn't be complete until he comes again. Paul has not been made perfect when we believe in Jesus. Instead, he is striving towards perfection. Can I say that? Did you hear me? Paul has not been made perfect when he believed in Jesus. Instead, he is striving imperfectly towards his goal, which he will reach when Christ come again. The truth be told is that all of us are striving for perfection. None of us are perfect. All of us will make mistakes. All of us will have situations where we're wanting to throw in the towel and we're wanting to give up. But yet and still, we realize that none of us, none of us are perfect. All of us have circumstances. All of us have situations. All of us have issues. I'm having issues with this mic right now. <laughs> but all of us have issues where we feel as if because of our circumstance, because of our issues, because of everything that's going around us, that we are trying our best. We're trying our best to be perfect in our relationships. We're trying our best to be, per, uh, be perfect in, uh, as a parent. We're, we're trying our best to be perfect as leaders in our church and leaders in our community. But the truth be told, is that even at our best, that none of us are perfect. I love the song, I love the song that says, sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Listen, you don't have the, you don't have the ability to judge me by my mistakes. You don't have the ability to look down on me. You have to understand, I'm doing my best. I love this sign. I, I saw this sign. Um, it says, um, uh, please be patient with everyone. The world has a shortage. Letting us know that there are so many of our jobs and so many um, of things going on right now that there's help wanted signs everywhere. And the people that's showing up, they're doing their best. They're working two or three jobs that they normally would just be doing one position, but now they're doing two or three things because they don't have enough people and we're all trying our best. I commend any pastor that in the last two years that have sat in front of cameras to record, not knowing if anybody would be watching on the other side. You're preaching and teaching online, you're recording, trying to have something and trying to have material that you know nothing about. There are, there are people that are having, uh, having to buy phones for the first time so that they can project on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and websites. There are others that have full studios so that they can do these things. Everybody is striving to do their best. So be patient. 
because nobody knows everything. Paul, Paul, Paul says this. Paul knows, uh, he knows that he hasn't achieved it yet. So he's pressing forward to the prize. Paul says that he does one thing, press forward while forgetting what is behind. He understand that he's pushing ahead, that he's understanding that his mistakes, his failures, his issues are behind him. He understand that nobody, nobody, nobody is perfect. Nobody has it all together. Everyone has a past. The truth be told is that some of us have a present. Lord, help me here. So we got to be able to be careful and be prayerful with people because nobody has it all together. Everyone has some type of skeleton. Everyone has some type of issue. Everyone has some type of circumstance. But yet it's still God gives us grace each and every day. God grants us the ability to know that he's right there with us. He gives us an opportunity, a chance to do things, to do things better. Just like God doesn't have amnesia, listen to this, just like God doesn't have amnesia when it comes to what we have done in our past, instead he chooses not, he chooses to not let what we have done in our past influence how he feels about our present. That's a quote, that's a quote I read. Just like God doesn't have amnesia when it comes to what we have done in our past. Instead, God chooses to not let what we have done in our past influence how God feels about us in our present. You have no, no uh, power to hold somebody past um, over their head because guess what? God didn't do that to you. Lord, help me here. God has erased what you've done. God does not hold your mistakes, does not hold your circumstance, does not hold your issues over your head. But yet and still, God grants you comfort, and reassurance that he's going to be right there with you. Can I tell you something? That's a powerful thing that God gives you reassurance that with all of your mistakes, all of your circumstance, all of your issues is that he's right there with you. Lord, help me here. That's a blessing in itself. And with everything that's going on, with all of my mistakes, with all of my circumstance, that he's right there with me. That he's there to comfort me. That he's right there to comfort me. He's there to care about me. He's there to love on me. That even in the midst of it all, he's right there. Paul life's focus is one thing. Is the prize at the end of the journey. I, I, I love, love watching gymnastics. It's something I couldn't do in a thousand years. Simone Biles and Gabby Douglas and all of those that have worked their hardest out. They've got on the track and uh, Usain Bolts and all of those during the Olympics. They have worked hard and they're working hard to get to that prize. They're putting their bodies through excruciating pains. And you watch NBA, NFL, all of these sports. They're pressing hard and they're doing this because they're trying to get to the ultimate goal to win a championship, to win a title, um, to become the best in their field so that they can get to their prize. 
What's your prize? For those that are Christians, what is your prize? For those that are in business, what's your prize? Because we have people that watch that are that might not be church goers, but they're listening in. So what's your prize? Your prize should not be to have drama or to be drama filled. Spending your time judging and looking at somebody funny. What's your prize? Write in the comments, what's your prize? What's your end result? What's your, what's your goal? So don't get distracted because oftentimes in life we get distracted to what's going on around us that we miss what God has try, is trying to give us or trying to do in our life. <clears throat> Paul is focused on salvation, the end goal. The, the prize have not been attained yet. But Paul is straining his body, his mind, so that he can reach the ultimate prize. All right? So Paul's goal is becoming like Christ, achieving eternal life like Christ. And Paul is focusing in on that end goal. We as believers have to understand that with everything that's going on, we have to focus on the prize. We have to press towards for the prize of the heavenly calling. We have to focus in on what God is going to do for us. So my question is, what, what, what are your expectations for this year? Take the time, take the time, even though you may have started out rough or started out slow in January. You know, I, I love how when people are running, they're, they're, they're on the track and how they plant their feet. They plant their feet and they're ready for that sound so they can kick off. Sometimes if you're too late to move, it, it, it dictates that quarter of a second for you losing a race or, or a quarter of a mile or whatever. It dictates that on how you start. But sometimes when you're having these short races, that can hurt. But if you're having these long races, eventually, eventually you'll win. Those, those short races is dependent upon how fast you are. But those long miles of races, they're depending on how long you can withstand and then have that burst at the end. I want us to stay, to stick to our goals, to focus on what God has called us to do. Because at time we get distracted, but I don't want you to give up. No, my brothers, no, my sisters. I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to throw in the towel. God is not done with you yet. All of your ability, all of your strength, everything that you have believed, God is going to give you. I believe that. But if you don't give up, God is going to give it to you. For this is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be, praise be to God. Listen, listen, I want you to believe, I want you to trust God that even though this year has started out rough, even though you've had some mistakes, even though you've had some setbacks, I want you to believe that God is right there with you. I want you to trust God. Listen, listen, listen. If you're not a member of our church, if you're looking for a church home, you can write in the comments, I'm looking for a church. I'm looking for a church or I want to join. I want to join. 
If so, we can get some information to you and get all of your contact information and pray um, that you will be a part of our congregation and be a part of our family. Okay? Listen, if you're wanting to give, you can click on the link right above you. You can give that way. I pray that this word has been a blessing to you, and I pray that you, throughout this day, throughout this night, throughout this week, that you focus on your goals and you don't give up. We are almost in February. This year is passing. It's already moving fast. We're almost out of January already. But guess what? You can get back to your goals. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. It's too early in the game for you to give up. Keep pushing. All right? All right? God bless you all. Y'all have a, a good rest of y'all night and get you some rest, okay? All right? Peace. Thank you for joining. See you soon.